on this the day before the hydroplane race. We're at the pits on a Saturday afternoon with uh, Tom Deeth and Chip Hanauer, Ron Armstrong, John Walters, and Steve Reynolds. What about uh, protective pods and ejection seats? I mean, what, what about the idea of the little cocoon kinds of things? Is that, well, does right, that strike anybody? Right now, I, I'd have to see uh, some more development. I'd have to see some drawings. I'm not really totally convinced that that's the answer. Uh, to take a vehicle that, that's having a problem uh, with a certain uh, type of blowover flipping condition uh, just to ignore that problem and then make a device for the driver to stay in when it's doing this, I think is almost borders on absurdity. Uh, let, let me just ask around, then. what's the, Steve, Steve, what's the most dangerous situation you've ever found yourself in? Now you're talking about in any situation or no, related I think, to hydroplanes? I think uh, with hydroplanes. <laughs> It would just have to be high speed running, you know, on, on uh, anything other than ideal water conditions. John? You know, <clears throat> obviously the most uh, trouble I've ever gotten in was in 1980 over in Pasco, and, and we did get upside down and backwards. Uh, yes, you did, John. It was twice. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it was, abs it was uh, you know, something that was due um, to a couple of things. One, uh, the boat was set up extremely light on its feet. There was a tremendous amount of air under the boat. Uh, which is, is basically the theory behind the new boat design. Uh, also, because of the, the conditions in, in Pasco, the water was extremely smooth over there. Uh, it's difficult to tell when, when the boat is getting, getting up, and we're trying to go fast. Uh, just excessive straightaway speed. Right. Uh, probably the most dangerous thing for me is dealing with my wife. But the second danger is I've had a couple incidents of losing rudders. and. Uh, not really blowing over the boats that I have driven in the past have not had that problem, but I've had lost two rudders, and that can get you into trouble in a hurry. Two quick things here. Not the business about your wife brings up the next question I was going to ask, because I want to know what. Uh, I mean, Dean Chenoweth was killed over in Pasco last weekend. Uh, you have wives, families, girlfriends, somebody, people that people that care about you. I mean, were you a little serious about that? Is your when you thought about taking this job, I, I saw you in the driver's meeting this morning, and some guy came up and laughed and slapped you on the back and said, uh, Ron, you're crazier than I thought you were. Um, is there any seriousness to that? Oh, I don't think I'm crazy at all. <laughs> no, I don't mean that part <laughs> but, uh, of that. But the fear, the family kind of fear. You know, we don't want you to go on and do this anymore. Well, of course, uh, you know, I have two uh, children and my wife, and they're very dead set against this. But I can understand my wife has gone through since I've been involved in and out for eight years, and I guess what we've had four fatalities. We were very, very close to Bill. That touches all very deeply. Uh, and then Dean on top of that, and then for me to drive the boat, it's very understandable, I'm sure, from the outside. Uh, Mr. Little, though, assured her that we would be running this very safe and sane, and that uh, what happened to Dean was a, you know, a once in a lifetime type of a freak accident, I guess, with the wind conditions that uh, apparently uh, Tom has been talking about. Uh, but it's something you have to deal with. I, you know, I went into this sport knowing that it was dangerous. We accept those risks. We try to keep as much under control as we can. Uh, but you know, I think it is very difficult, very hard on wives. Chip. I'm not married. I don't have a family, and I won't be as long as I'm racing. Just uh, for me, you know, and I understand that it's personal for everyone, you know, differently. But for me, it would be very hard to, to do what I do spend the amount of time and emotion doing what I'm doing and, and have a family. So I'm, I'm waiting until I get this out of my system before I start paying. I think basically each driver has to uh, take in perspective uh, what the sport is all about and it's a form of entertainment. And uh, the gas pedal works both ways. Uh, I think, uh, in, in, as far as I'm concerned anyway, uh, my primary concern on the race course is survival for Tom D. Uh, I, I like to race, but my philosophy has always been try and win as slowly as possible. Uh, I have a wife, I have a family. I started racing when I was 14 years old. I've been racing for 24 years. Uh, I like to think that my better judgment will keep me around another 24 years. And I, I enjoy racing. And uh, it's, it's my form of relaxation. Some people like to play tennis, some people like to play golf. Uh, uh, to get away from the day-to-day, -day, everyday things that I do at my shop and boat building and, and engine building and so forth. Uh, it's my way to kind of just break loose, uh, get involved in, in a sport where I'm totally relaxed. Last, uh, last Saturday in Pasco, when you said thumbs down, because of the wind conditions and the water conditions, should the officials have taken the decision about whether or not to go 
away from uh, drivers and taking it upon themselves and said, no, we're not going to run this? Well, basically, I was one of many drivers on the race course at the time, and uh, and I can appreciate probably why they pro you know they ignored my decision. I had the most to gain, and uh, because if they were of not to have been able to run the heat, and I knew this going into it, uh, that uh, I would have been declared the winner on the basis of points. But uh, also, on the other hand, I had mixed emotions because I had the most to lose. And I was not thinking in terms of canceling the race. I was thinking in terms of possibly delaying it for a half hour to 45 minutes. And I, had, I was aware of the fact that the fans back in the Atlas were sitting in the, in the pit area and weren't coming out. So it, it, uh, I, I kind of thought that uh, maybe they would have looked at my judgment uh, a little more closely and, and, and give me credit for, for what I had to lose at the time. But the basic question, should officials have stepped in, <laughs> taken the decision away from the drivers, none of this thumbs up, thumbs down business, you go or you don't go, and you can't go now because these are the conditions. What no, I don't, I, it's still their ultimate decision, okay. no matter what we it's do. True. Um, I've been in races where everybody went thumbs up, and I've had officials say, you're not racing, you know. So they, they do exercise that. How about not looking at, I think uh, one of the things, one of the things that I guess that I heard this morning was that the officials do not even look at the videotapes anymore to find out what the whole cause of the accident was and try and, and uh, try and do something about that. Well, that's, I think that was Mr. Rudman's comment in the paper. And, um, I know everybody's team manager and crew chief has been over those Budweiser films over and over again. It was our film and we tried to distribute it to everybody who wanted it and uh, that thing will be looked at thousands of times. We'll uh, continue and wrap up this uh, conversation on the day before race day at the pits in Seattle in two minutes. We have uh, taken five of the uh, hydroplane drivers to chat with for our show this afternoon. Um, what are the, if you you know, you have submitted, you've all submitted to a lot of interviews from me, from a whole lot of other people. We get together almost every year. It intrigues me to know, some of the questions are always the same. If you were to put yourselves in positions of the interviewers, what would you be asking? What are the things that you would ask that the rest of us don't have any idea about? What are the things that are important that seem to never get covered? Chip? I think um, maybe I would ask someone to try and express the satisfaction joy uh, that they derive from racing. You know, we seem to, you know, this has been, I think, a half-hour show, and we focus probably 25 minutes yeah. of it on, on something very negative. And that tends to overshadow the, the amount of teamwork and, and fellowship and, you know, all the wonderful things that are involved in racing that, that we don't get asked about. Okay. Who else? Who else you know, has I would, it? Steve? My question would be just about like chips. I would like everybody to know the amount of... Uh, of respect and, and fellowship that, that does go on between one camp to another, even though we go out and compete against one another. There's a tremendous amount of admiration and respect for everybody that's, that's involved here. Uh, I said once that it's okay for me to attack John or Ron or, or Tommy, but don't let anybody outside of my fraternity do that, because then they have me to deal with, too. Uh, there is a tremendous amount of respect, and we do hold that for one another. This is it's really very much like a family. Tom, can you think of anything? No, not really. Uh, the questions that were asked me, uh, I would probably be asking the same question. Ron? I think that's uh, true. Most of them are, you know, they're involved with the sport. But I think uh, some of the drivers, maybe Bill was one that transitioned, you know, made over the sport. And uh, I think it was important that people sometimes know who the drivers are really. What do they really do? What do they really think? That, I don't think that's ever really covered. Are the crew chiefs, what makes them tick? How? Why are they so dedicated? And and because you put these people up against the average person, you see there's there's no comparison. A very special group, the crew chiefs, and the technology that goes in to these boats, and it's total dedication. And I don't think that's ever really uh, ever shown. You see the boat show up, you don't see night after night like the crew is working on the Budweiser or in any of these other boats that are top-notch boats. You you miss that every time I've ever talk with people or you see films about racing, that whole aspect is gone and you never usually can describe, maybe it's hard to put in words, the feeling that one has when he drives one of these race boats. The awesome power that's controlled by your foot and your destiny is controlled by your foot. Thing is, it's those very people that Ron talks about that really make us what we are. I believe that we are the least important entity in the whole team, you know, that, that a mediocre driver can win with a great team. 
but a, uh, a, a great driver can't win with a mediocre team, and they get overshadowed. John, do you have something to chime yeah, I, in I with I think that, you know, we really ought to look more in depth of the people that are involved in the overall sport, including, you know, the, the people that we've already mentioned, the, the obvious ones that, that do all the work and don't get any of the credit, the, the crew chiefs, the, the crew people, the owners, and the team managers and all. I also think that you know, we ought to get more involved with, with the people that actually put on the racing, the, the people that, you know, the, the seafare committee. What, what, you know, what benefit do they get out of it other than just the, the sheer enjoyment of seeing, you know, uh, five or six of, of the most competitive machines in the world with the most competitive guys behind the wheels pushing those things uh, to their limit but not exceeding that and putting on, you know, just, just an exceptional race. Uh, what, what motivates, you know, the, the fans to come out here and sit all day long and, and watch us, you know, uh, play games and go around in circles. Uh, a <laughs> couple, couple of quick things. You were you were talking about slowing down a little bit. Can uh, Pan Pack go a lot faster than it, than it has been? Our boat's definitely capable of, of going faster, and I don't, like I had mentioned before, I don't think that we're absolutely going to end up slowing down the boats. We just end up slowing down the time frame that they have to go that fast. Ron, what's your... Uh, What's, what's the uh, condition of the Budweiser this afternoon? Well, uh, we were there about 1.30 last night, and they were putting the third coat of about five coats of resin on the deck. I imagine by now they was probably splashing some sort of paint. Uh, it's sitting on the ground on a dolly. It's got to then be completely cleaned up and uh, all the hardware reinstalled. Uh, I'm sure they're going to have a very, very late night again, but I'm confident we'll be ready. Steve, uh, John, and Ron, and Chip, and Tom, thank you for uh, taking a half hour out of a hot Saturday afternoon to talk with us and answer some things that I think are on a lot of people's minds. I'm glad you spent some time with us and uh, good luck to you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for watching us. Good night.